Hello students! Today we're going to learn how to emphasize our statements. In other words, how to add some functions to the language, not only just saying, but meaning something apart from the words we say. There are many ways to emphasize in English. Today we focus on auxiliaries. Basically, we use auxiliaries to provide emphasis. Say the examples. I can't go to this party, but I am going to the one next week. Or, I can't dance the Paso Doble, but I can dance the tango. Mind that not all the auxiliaries are stressed. We only stress the ones we want to give emphasis on, the, the, the statement we want to emphasize. In the first example, can't is not stressed, but am um, is, because we want to emphasize this fact that we're going to party next week. In the second one, the first can't is not stressed, but the second is because we, can, we want to emphasize the fact that we dance tango in spite of not dancing Paso Doble. Okay, so what happens if there is no auxiliary? Well, um, if we want to add an emphasis uh, in a sentence like in present simple or past simple where we don't have the auxiliary, we will use what the um, linguistics call the emphatic do. It is a do which has not particular meaning, it just gives emphasis, uh, but it still does have um, grammatical information. On it. Therefore, if we talking about the third person singular, as it's this case, we will have to use does, and if we speak in the past, we will have to use did. The emphatic do is placed right before the verb we want to emphasize. Okay, let's take a look at the examples. She doesn't like cheese, does she? But she does like cheese. In fact, she loves it. You said you would phone me. I did phone you. But you didn't answer. Okay, I didn't phone you, but I did send you a text. Okay, so why do we use emphasis? Now we know that we emphasize with the auxiliaries. If there is no auxiliary, we use the auxiliary do, does or did before the main verb. But what is the, uh, uh, the main aim of emphasizing? Well, first of all, we we can use just um, we can emphasize sorry just for uh, em emotion just to express that we feel strongly about something uh, for example I do think we should start consuming less you can say I think we should start consuming less which is okay it's a statement but with I do think we should start consuming less you are strengthening the fact that you feel very strongly about it okay uh, we can also use emphasis to con contrast information, to indicate also a contradiction. It's just, we do this especially when we want to correct what someone thinks or just contrast two facts. For example, I don't like cottage cheese, but I do like blue cheese. We express in a contrast, even though I don't like one type of cheese, I do like this, the other type of cheese. Um, why haven't you tied it up? But I have, I did this morning. We're contradicting what the other person says. We're correcting what they're saying. Right, mind that this use of contrastive emphasis is often used with connectors like however, but, or although, that is strengthen that contrast. There are other uses uh, of emphasis. We may want to express surprise, enthusiasm, criticism, or certainty. Uh, these are these are some examples. Goodness me, you have lost weight. Could be surprise, could be enthusiasm in support of the person who's lost weight. Oh, you can talk now, right? That's, we criticize it. So before I wanted to talk to you and you were so busy, but now you're talking to the new blonde girl in the office. I see. I can do this. I really can. Yes, we are supporting ourselves, but we are expressing certainty. We are able to do it. Yes, we can. Good. We can also use emphasis uh, to express persuasive commands. The thing is that in English, the um, imperative sounds sometimes it sounds a little bit straightforward. Uh, some it, it, 
could also sound a little bit rude. That's why we Spanish speakers sound sometimes sound a little bit rude or impolite uh, to an English uh, to English speakers because of the way we use certain um, items of language. The imperative being one of them. There are many ways, and you can soften your imperatives, mainly including the words please, thank you, etc. Um, but with emphasis, with the emphatic do, we can also soften it. Soften it. It's, we say, do come in. We are being friendly. Oh, do sit down. Um, we can confirm, when we emphasize, sorry, we, we are sometimes confirming that something, uh, confirming something that we think it's true. And it's usually followed by a question tag. Just picture the, the following situation. Your daughter's new boyfriend is coming for uh, dinner and you don't want to screw things up. You want to make sure about his tastes so you don't ruin dinner. So you might ask, he does eat meat, doesn't he? Just to make sure uh, that he does, he's not a vegan and you're not going to screw up by serving lamb or chicken. Okay? Note that we can stress do and other auxiliaries in short answers as well. You don't drink coffee, do you? Oh, yes, I do. What gave you that idea? You can simply say, I do, but gave you that idea without the yes, okay? Fine. Um, speaking about um, confirming, not being sure, we use um, the, uh, and the emphasis also in if clauses when we're not very sure about that condition. If, if it's true, it will be true, it has been true at some point. And we use them as um, in short answers, we use them in response to someone's action. So bear in mind this dialogue happening in, a, in an office. I don't think I'll be seeing Paul today. Well, if you do, can you ask him to get in touch with me? I wonder if he's coming to tomorrow's meeting. Well, if he isn't, come. If he isn't, sorry, he should have told us by now. Perhaps he's left a message with his assistant. If he has, she hadn't passed it on. You see the extra emphasis in the auxiliaries? Yes, if you rewind, rewind the video and uh, see the uh, examples again, you will see how the emphasis is placed through um, stress. But we'll, we'll go back to that. Um, I want you to focus on the sentences here between brackets. Okay, so on the one hand, we're emphasizing, but we also remember when we saw um, the substitution it's these auxiliaries serve as a substitution for these phrases, so we don't repeat them again. So we, uh, we have two functions here, substituting and emphasizing. Okay, so as I was saying, how, how do we express emphasis? Well, if we don't have an auxiliary, we have do, the emphatic do, do, does and did. But what happens with the rest of the auxiliaries? How do we mark the stress? Well, there's no way to know it in a, if we are emphasizing in the written um, form unless you write the auxiliary in capital letters. When we speak in it, something simpler than that, what we do is we place stress on the auxiliary, which means we say it louder or we use more force of voice. Take a look at these examples. Why aren't you going to the party? But I am going to the party. But I am going to the party. Do you notice this extra force? But I am going to the party. You haven't tidied up your room. I have tidied it. I did it this morning. I have tidied it. I did it this morning. You see this, this the extra stress here in half? They do need to change their attitude. They do need to change their attitude. Do you feel it? Yes? Okay. Some notes to bear in mind when we are emphasizing. First, a note about contractions. So when, when we use emphasis uh, in positive forms, we have to use the, the whole form of the auxiliary, not the contracted form. Um, what I mean is, if we're speaking at normal statement, would say I am going I'm going to the party I'm going to the party the auxiliary am um, is not stressed and that's why we are able to contract it I'm going to the party 
But if we are emphasizing, um, we, we are contradicting someone's um, uh, statement, we have to emphasize it, we cannot contract it, because how do you, con how do you stress one single letter? There is no way to do that. Uh, so mind, but I am going to the party. I am going to the party. It's the same example here. You can t tell your mom, I've tidied my room, give me my reward, I've tidied my room. Normal statement. But your mother's telling you off. You haven't tidied up your room. And you want to contradict it. But I have tidied up my room, mom. What are you saying? I'm a good boy or a good girl. Okay? Secondly, we've, we have positive statements all through the video. But what happens if we want to, con to emphasize the negative? Well, in this case, we can contract the auxiliaries, as in this case, right? Because what we emphasize is the whole auxiliary with the not in it. No, she isn't. She isn't. She isn't. Okay? It's stressed. Uh, mind that with the first person singular, I'm not, um, there is no other way to contract it. We always contract the, uh, the verb to be with the I form, right? I'm not. It's the only way. So how do you contrast? How do you emphasize it? By um, putting the force, the stress in not. No, I'm not. Are you single? No, I'm not. I'm married. Okay? Fine. Just another note. Adverbs can also be used in an emphatic way. Um, if we use them with emphatic do, for example, we are reinforcing the remark. Uh, the adverbs that we use for emphasis are really, certainly, or definitely, and they go right before the auxiliary verb, as in the examples. I really do think you should phone her. She certainly is looking better, isn't she? Mind that you have to stress both the adverb and the auxiliary. Okay, last but no least, it's your turn to check that you've understood my explanations in the video. Remember that you can watch the video as many times as you need. Now, I've given you a handout. It's also in my blog. You can download it with exercises. I would like you to do this first exercise. In this first exercise, exercise you have some sentences and you have to uh, decide what's the function. Right? Is this in fact, is, the, is this emotive stress? It is contrastive. Is it, it showing surprise, uh, etc. Okay. And the second exercise is related to the auxiliaries. In these sentences, you have normal statements and you have emphatic statements. You will have to decide whether you use in the contracted form, therefore non-stressed, therefore non-emphatic or the full form which should be stressed. So you have to decide basically where to put the emphasis. Read the examples very careful, very carefully. Sorry. Okay, and that's the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Remember, you can watch it as many times as you want, as I said before. We will discuss this in class next day, and I will answer all the questions that you have about it. Okay, thanks for watching.